Almighty Father, hear our prayer. And look with mercy on this, your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was ready to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 13, and chapter 53, through to verse 12. The Lord says, My servant will succeed in his task. He will be highly honoured. Many people were shocked when they saw him. He was so disfigured that he hardly looked human. But now many nations will marvel at him, and kings will be speechless with amazement. They will see and understand something they had never known. The people reply, Who would have believed what we now report? Who could have seen the Lord's hand in this? It was the will of the Lord that his servant grow like a plant, taking root in dry ground. He had no dignity or beauty to make us take notice of him. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing that would make us draw, draw us to him. We despised him and rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he were nothing. But he endured the suffering that should have been ours. The pain that we should have borne. All the while we thought that his suffering was punishment sent by God. But because of our sins he was wounded. Beaten because of the evil we did. We are healed by the punishment he suffered made whole by the blows he received. All of us were like sheep that were lost, each of us going his own way. But the Lord made the punishment fall on him, the punishment all of us deserve. He was treated harshly, but endured it humbly. He never said a word, like a lamb about to be slaughtered, like a sheep about to be shed. He never said a word. He was arrested and sentenced and led off to die. And no one cared about his fate. He was put to death for the sins of our people. He was placed in a grave with those who are evil. He was buried with the rich, even though he had never committed a crime or ever told a lie. The Lord says, It was my will that he should suffer. His death was a sacrifice to bring forgiveness. And so he will see his descendants. He will live a long life. And through him my purpose will succeed. After a life of suffering, he will again have joy. He will know that he did not suffer in vain. My devoted servant, with whom I am, and for his sake, I will forgive him. And so, I will give him a place of honor, a place among the great and powerful. He willingly gave his life and shared the fate of evil men. He took the place of many sinners and prayed that they might be forgiven. To you, Lord, have I come for shelter. Let me never be put to shame. Oh, deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me and be swift to save me. Into your hands, Lord, I commit my spirit. Ngoguba ukupila wami kupelela osizini. Neminyaga yami egububuleni. Senga bais unulong enga ezitazami. Iga kulu wabakele nenami. In your hands, 
Lord, I commit my spirit. I am a thing of horror to my friends and those that see me in the street shrink from me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. Into your hands, Lord, I commit my spirit. Oguba giguzwile ukseba wabaningi. Ukona ivu song a song e Bangakela ukobe Bat eba ugubulala umpefumulo wami Into your hands Lord I commit my spirit but in you lord have i put my trust i have said you are my god all my days are in your hand oh deliver me from the power of my enemies and from my person Cutters. In your hands, Lord, I commit my spirit. No call is why is we looking Nina nong e enim konza yo usmagate. Inani inchizio yenu ibenes bindi. Nina nong e enetemba usimagate. Into your hands, Lord, I commit my. Spirit. Jesus as High Priest Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Do not let all kinds of strange teachings lead you from the right way. It is good to receive inner strength from God's grace and not by obeying rules about foods those who obey these rules have not been helped by them. The priests who serve in the Jewish place of worship have no right to eat any of the sacrifice on our altar. The Jewish high priest brings the blood of the animals into the most holy place to offer it as a sacrifice for sins. But the bodies of the animals are burned outside the camp. For this reason, Jesus also died outside the city in order to purify the people from sin with his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp and share his shame. For there is no permanent city for us here on earth. We are looking for the city which is to come. Let us then always offer praise to God as our sacrifice through Jesus, which is the offering presented by lips that confess him as Lord. Do not forget to do good and to help one another, because these are the sacrifices that please God. Hear the word of the Lord. Christ humbles himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the names which is above all names. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 19, reading verses 1 to 37. 
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown of thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him. And they came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went out once more and said to the crowd, Look, I'll bring him out to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Look, here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple guards saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, You take him then and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. The crowd answered back, We have a law that says he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace and asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Remember, I have the authority to set you free and also to have you crucified. Jesus answered, You have authority over me only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. But the crowd shouted back, If you set him free, that means you are not the emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he took Jesus outside and sat down in the judge's seat in the place called the Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, the name is Gabbatha. It was then almost noon of the day before the Passover. Pilate said to the people, Here is your king. They shouted back, Kill him, kill him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priest answered, The only king we have is the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to, the, to be crucified. So they took charge of Jesus. He went out, carrying his cross, and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. They also crucified two other men, one on each side, with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is what, it, is what he wrote. Many people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. The chief priests said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written stays written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. They also took the robe, which was made of one, of one piece of woven cloth, without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it, let's throw a dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scriptures come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Colpas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciples he loved standing there. So he said to his mother, He is your son. Then he said to the disciples, She is your mother. From that time, the disciples took her to live in his home. Jesus knew that by now everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there, full of cheap wine. So a sponge was soaked in the wine and put in a stalk of hyssop and lifted to his lips. Jesus drank the wine and said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and died. 
Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. They requested requested this because it was Friday and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side, and at once blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen has spoken of it, so that you also may believe. What he said is true, and he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, People will look at him whom they pierced. Six days into the lockdown, I ventured out to the shop. What I hadn't factored in was that it was the day after social grants payments. The queues, even early in the morning, were 15 or 20 people long. I tried to breathe deeply and appreciate the fact that I was amongst people for the first time in a week. A woman behind me tapped me on the back and by gestures and inarticulate sounds seemed to be asking me to keep her place. Off she limped painfully to find some missing item for her trolley. I nodded, breathed some more and kept two trolleys going. She eventually got back and tried to enter into a conversation, but I couldn't understand more than about one word in 20. I guessed she'd had a stroke which had affected her speech. She probably felt as deeply frustrated at my lack of comprehension as I did. So there we were, physically present to one another after days, at least in my case, without seeing another person, and we couldn't communicate. Together, and yet each of us confined to our own world. Despite having been alone for days, this was the loneliest moment of my week. Two human beings together, but no way of reaching each other. The conversation between Jesus and Pilate in today's Passion reading from John's Gospel offers two striking examples of this communication gap. Two human beings together, but not reaching each other. Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus responds, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. Pilate, immediately alert to the threat of arrival, cries, so you are a king. But here is the gap. There are two quite different understandings of kingship. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, he says, because he will not use manipulation and politics and armed force. He is not after status and power. He is not a contender for Pilate's position. By the way, that does not mean that his kingdom is only in heaven and has nothing to do with the earth. Both kingdoms, Pilate's and Jesus, are right here. The difference is of attitude, worldview. Pilate's kingdom is about fighting and struggle and grabbing and holding holding on to power. Jesus' kingdom is about letting go of power and control, foot washing. Jesus' kingship is made visible to all when a notice is fastened to the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. His kingship is made visible in the crucifixion. This is what a king in Jesus' kingdom looks like. And it looks nothing like Pilate's. And it looks nothing like our kingdoms. Smart suits, smart cars, smart phones, well-respected professions, designer-furnished homes, all of which, it seems, we are willing to fight to achieve and retain. Is that too harsh a judgment? Well, how about this statistic? Last year, Five million children worldwide died from starvation. Not one government declared a state of disaster, 
And I'd be willing to bet not many of us change the way we live to address this catastrophe. Life, for most of us, went on as usual. And then that question, what is truth? It's the best of questions. But how does Pilate ask it? And what is he seeking to know? I imagine him asking with a giant, world-weary, cynical shrug. What is truth? Who knows? It's all relative, depending on who you ask. What indeed is truth? In the early days of COVID-19 in South Africa, like many of us, I imagine, I obsessively listened to the news to glean information. How many people infected? Where had they traveled? Who was at risk? More and more information. It was almost as though I could protect myself by gathering all these facts. If I just know enough, I can be in control. Of course, information is useful, but truth is something else. Truth is not the opposite of fake news. It's not even good news. I am the truth, says Jesus. Truth is a person. They are speaking past each other. Pilate seeks information. Jesus offers relationship. Those on the side of truth listen to me. Poor Pilate, trapped by his world of military power, the world of empire, is unable to risk relationship, and he ends up handing Jesus over to the mob to be crucified. Not just put to death, crucified. The most humiliating and excruciating form of torture the mighty Roman Empire could devise. A form of torture designed to imprint indelibly a form of truth power on subjugated peoples. How often, like Pilate, are we trapped by our own world of empire and unable to risk relationship? Ours is, of course, not the empire of Rome, but the empire of capital and consumerism. I need to build up a safe bank balance. I need those shares to increase in value. I can't pay my employees more. Otherwise, what will happen to my profits? And then, if we are fortunate, we come to the foot of the cross. Yes, I do mean fortunate. When we come to the place of shattered dreams, when we come face to face with death, when we come to the end of the world as we know it, something else happens. The dreams of kingship are shattered and a new truth emerges. Dear woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. If we're paying attention, and it's hard not to with daily rates of infection and numbers of death, with being locked into our homes and life as we've known it turned upside down, if we're paying attention, this is a moment of opportunity. COVID-19 is not out there. It's not an illness of the rich who travel or the poor who live in shacks or men over 50 or those with compromised health. It's in here. Every one of us is vulnerable. We all have COVID-19. Not one of us can escape unaffected. We're at the foot of the cross. And the world we know is dying. But we stand like the beloved disciple and the mother of Jesus alongside one another at that cross. Can we hear that invitation to each of us? Dear woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. Can we hear the invitation to become part of a new community? Can we hear the truth of relationship? Can we hear the invitation to let go of the kingdoms of empire, of pilot, and embrace the kingdom where service and vulnerability and love replace power and might. It's not as if by waving a magic wand we can heal our world. We will still face alienation and fear. But Jesus' words to his mother and his friend give us the first small step. Every small act of courage or kindness or compassion or generosity 
walks us away from Pilate's kingdom of terror. And so I return to my story of the woman and me in the supermarket queue. Was I, like Pilate, simply responding out of my worldview? Am I so accustomed to connecting through words that I felt we had not reached each other because I could not understand her? But just for a moment, imagine this woman simply needed to be seen. Imagine she also just needed someone to make sure she didn't have to stand for half an hour longer than necessary by losing her place in the queue. Whilst I felt frustrated, did she perhaps feel thankful that I had done this small thing? It's easy to feel powerless, helpless in the face of the virus, and even more so perhaps in the face of the sickness of society. But the new community is formed at the foot of the cross, one small act of kindness by another. Dear woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. Amen. The General Intercessions Today Christ offers his life to the Father for the salvation of humankind. In union with him, we now pray that all may receive the benefits of his passion. For the Church Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God, the Almighty Father, may guide it and gather it together so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Christ your Son. 
guide the work of your church, help it to persevere in faith, to proclaim your name, and to bring your salvation to people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. For the clergy and laity of the church. Let us pray for Indaba Zintle, our Vicar General, together with Tabo, our Metropolitan, for all bishops, for all priests, especially Vernon, and for deacons, for those who have a special ministry in the church, and for all God's people. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help all in their own vocation to do your work more faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, let us pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation that God in his mercy may make them responsive to his love. Almighty and eternal God, you continually add to your church those whom you call. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism and confirmation and make them faithful members of your chosen family. Lord, in your mercy. For the unity of Christians, let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who seek the truth. Almighty and eternal God, you keep together those you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus your Son. We are consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Jewish people. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may continue to grow in the love of his name and confess Jesus as Messiah. Almighty and eternal God, you gave your promise to Abraham and his descendants. Grant that the people you first made your own may arrive at the fullness of redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that, they, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, whom all seek, even unknowingly. Open the eyes of those who know not Christ, that 
they may find in him alone the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Keep a moment's silence. Almighty and eternal God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Have mercy on all who live in doubt and unbelief, that they may know you, the one creator God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God will guide their minds and hearts so that all may live in true peace and freedom. We pray for our state president and all the ministers that are under his command, for the health sector, the defense force, the police services, transport and social services, finance and trade, etc., that during this lockdown all human rights will be observed so that we come through this with renewed freedom and peace. Almighty and eternal God, in your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy true freedom, security and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray, dear friends, that God, the Almighty Father, may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travellers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger and disease. We pray especially for those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and the many who are waiting to receive tests. We pray for the vulnerable, the aged, the frail. We pray for the homeless and the jobless and those living in squalor conditions. We pray for healing and nourishment, for shelter, dignity and courage that all may be granted healing, strength, and those who are bereaved may find true comfort and peace through the resurrected Lord. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Lord, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Lord, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.
my, my people, people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt, from slavery to freedom, but you led your Saviour to the cross. My, my people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. For forty years I led you safely through the desert. I fed you with manna from heaven and brought you to a land of plenty, but you led your Saviour to the cross. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. What more could I have done for you? I planted you as my fairest vine, but you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you pierced your Saviour's side with a lance. Holy is God, holy and strong, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. I opened the sea before you, but you opened my side with a spear. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud, but you led me to Pilate's court. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I bore you up with manna in the desert, but you struck me down and scourged me. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I gave you saving water from the rock, but you gave me gall and vinegar to drink. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I gave you a royal scepter, but you gave me a crown of thorns. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I raised you to the height of majesty, but you have raised me high on a cross. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. We praise and adore you, O Christ. By your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain, to receive all power and wealth, wisdom and might, honour and glory and praise. We praise and adore you, O Christ. By your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. You are worthy, O Christ, for you were slain, and by your blood you purchased for God people of every tribe, language, nation and race. You have made them a royal house to serve our God as priests, and they shall reign upon earth. We praise and adore you, O Christ. By your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty and eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue this healing work within us and grant that we who participate in this mystery may never cease to give you dedicated service. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, send down your abundant blessing on your people who have devoutly recalled the death of your Son in the sure hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon, bring them comfort, and may their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. Amen. <laughs>